Shavuot Tov everyone, and Shana Tova, Vachag Sameach. Welcome to video number 113 in our Tillis Tell Stories for a Saturday Night Group. This one is for Simchus Torah. I adapted and supplemented it from the written version of Yaakov Kass of Jerusalem, which was first published in the popular Israeli English language weekly, Living Jewish, uh, with a few additions from the version, the Hebrew version on Chabadpedia.co.il. Its title is Sweet Songs I Shall Weave. Uh, for nine years, from 1955 to, to 1963, towards the end of the, uh, the Simchat celebrations in 770 Eastern Parkway, the Babich World Headquarters in Brooklyn, the Babich Rebbe would teach a new nigan, a new Hasidic song to the large crowd assembled there. These tunes have become a significant part of Chabad musical classics. One of them, from 1961, is a version of Anim Zemirot, which was never heard before. The Rebbe began with an introductory story and then proceeded to teach the melody for the words of the first stanza. The story is about a holy Jew in synagogue on Yom Kippur. As the congregation was praying Ma'ariv, the evening prayer, prayer, at the termination of the 25 plus hours fast, this man put one foot on a bench and, still covered by his talus, his prayer shawl, began singing Anim Zemira to the new tune. When the gabbai, the shul manager, opened the shul for the morning prayers, this holy Jew was still in the same position and still singing the same tune, not yet even having broken his fast. Within a short time after this session with the Rebbe, a lively discussion arose among the Hasidim as to who this Jew was in the story that the Rebbe had told. The general consensus was that it must have been the Rebbe himself, but there were many differing opinions. So they turned to the famous Hasid, Ruven Dunin, who had a particularly close relationship with the Rebbe, and begged him to ask the Rebbe who the person in the story was. Ruven Dunin, Dunin fulfilled his mission faithfully. With a smile, the Rebbe replied, no, it wasn't me. I don't even know who it was, but I do know that he was not a Chabad Chassid, as I shall explain. There was once a poor Jew in Russia who eked out a living by going from door to door selling haberdashery. It occurred to him that if he could make enough money to open his own factory, he could make a larger profit on his sales and become rich. So for many years, he put aside a few coins every day until he had saved a significant amount, enough to buy a plot of land on which to build his factory. On the way to sign the contract with the seller and purchase the chosen plot, he passed by a Jewish inn. Outside the inn stood a desperately distraught woman, surrounded by her children, crying hysterically. He asked her what the problem was, and she answered that her husband had just passed away, leaving them without a penny. She told him that the, her wicked and heartless landlord was threatening to evict them and to throw them in jail if they did not pay the rent immediately. He asked her how much she needed, whereupon she quoted the exact sum of money he had in his pocket. Without hesitating for a second, and with a big smile, he gave her all of his money. His factor was not to be... But that was no consequence in comparison to having merited to save a Jewish family from destitution. A storm broke out in heaven as a result of this amazing act of Messiah's nephew of self-sacrifice, and it was decreed that Elijah the prophet should go down to earth and reward the generous Jew with a choice, either of untold riches or a visit to the heavenly Gan Eden to hear how a nigan, a tune, is sung there. The Jew chose the latter, and this came to be for him when immediately after Yom Kippur, he was singing Anim Zemiro throughout the night until the following morning. The Rebbe then looked at Ruven Dudin, smiled, and said, but if he would have been a Lubavitcher, he would have opted to take the wealth. Why? In order to establish and maintain Chabad all over the world. Chabad houses. Uh, in case you're not familiar with the song Anim Zemiro as it is sung, uh, <clears throat> as it is sung in, in uh, referring to the story, it, it actually it is sung responsively with a much different, much more lively tune than the one in the story in most Ashkenazic synagogues at the end of the Shabbat morning prayer service with the Holy Ark open and often it is led by a preteen. In truth, however, its words are deeply spiritual and Hasidim relate to them with reverence as they reference several high themes of Kabbalah as this translation of the first paragraph uh, shall demonstrate. Uh, I'll read it. Pleasant songs and hymns I shall weave because my soul belongs for you. My soul desires the shade of your hand and to know and internalize each of your mysteries. 
And this, this reverence is reflected in the Hasidic tunes for it, especially the Chabad when introduced by the Rebbe as described in the story. Now, I'm a notoriously poor singer. I won't dare to punish your ears. But you can enjoy it online at Chabad.org. The link to it on their website is www.chabad.org one four uh, slash org slash one four zero seven oh two one four zero seven oh two www chabad dot chabad dot org one four zero seven oh two chag sameach